In this video, we will take a look at how to create, edit, and add members to a group. To create your group, click on Create Group in the upper left-hand corner. You first need to enter a name for your group, maybe your department, and then you can give the group a description. Then we click Next. Now we need to adjust our privacy settings. First, we adjust who can search for our group. Can group members find it, or can our entire organization? Who can join the group? Only people we invite? Anyone in the organization can ask to be a member, or do we just want to let anyone who wants to join? Then we can adjust who can view the conversations. If we only want the group members to see conversations, we'll leave it at the default. If we want to let the entire organization, we can select that, if maybe only you want group managers to see the conversations, select that, and you also have the option to only allow group owners. Then we can adjust who can post to our group. If we want any group members to be able to email and work with that group, we select that option. We can also choose to just have group managers be able to post. What this means is if you're using this as an email group, you're choosing who can email the whole group. So by default, anyone who's in the group can email the whole group at once. If you only want specific people to have access to that, you would choose group managers or group owners. Then you can choose who can view the members. Do we only want the owners, managers, members, or the entire organization? On the next page is where we can add our members. Under Group Members, we can list the names of those we would like to join our group. You can also copy and paste a group of email addresses right into this box. You can then select your group managers and your group owners. This is how you'll set those different permissions. Let's think about maybe a student group. If we have an email group for our class and we only want the teachers to be able to email that whole group, we would make all of the teachers group managers, and we'd make all the students group members. Then, when we're in our privacy settings, we can allow only group managers to email that whole group. If maybe it's your department, you want everyone to be a group member, and then you can allow all department members to be able to add conversations or send those email messages. Add your welcome message if you would like, and then you choose the subscription option. Do you want all of your members to see all email, a digest, an abridged version, or none? We usually leave that on all email. Finally, the last option is to directly add members to the group. If this is turned on, any email address that we've entered under members or managers will automatically be added. If we turn that off, we can invite people to join our group. So with that turned off, we don't directly add them. We ask people if they want to be a member of the group. When you're ready, go ahead and click Create Group. Now that it's been created, I can go ahead and click Go to Group. Once I'm in my group, I can simply start a conversation. Notice that this opens up an email message. Your conversations are email messages but they're all stored right here in Google Groups for easy access. Once I'm here, I can manage my members off to the side and I can adjust those group settings just like I did before. When I click on Group Settings, I can see the same options that I looked at before. Notice that there is an option to moderate your messages. So if you want to moderate messages before you let them submit to the group, you can do so. If you're using this with students, that may be something that you want to turn on. A lot of school districts have Google Groups set up so students cannot go to groups.google.com. However, they can access all of the messages through their email. So know that even if they can't go to groups.google.com, they can still access all of the conversations through Gmail.